Hello and welcome to video number 4. This week I'm going to be continuing the hair groom and the look dev as well as the rendering. I'm also going to be using Rebus Farm to render out the final turntable of the character. Here I'm painting a density map for the, uh, the hair groom. This is the hair description. I'm painting in where the hair is supposed to go as I continue to refine uh, the groom. Testing out some of the clumping and playing around with the density. I'm displaying the region that I've painted earlier. Also noticing some issues here and there with the geometry. Using soft select just to quickly uh, fix that. Also using the average vertex option to soften and smooth out some of the vertices while I fix the clipping issues that I didn't notice earlier when I was posing the character. This is going to be hidden but I'm just doing it uh, for cleanliness. Now I'm showing the scalp for the hair and I continue to find the guides. Also placing additional guides in some spots that I've missed before because you don't have guides uh, associated with the, the painted area for the density. Uh, you're not going to be able to control that area. That's why I add additional guides to uh, spots that are empty. And I'm using the, the move brush to uh, move that guides around. Also painting out some of the, the parting on the region map for the back of the head. It was getting a little bit too separated in the back there, although we're not going to see it under the hat, but I'm still doing it just to show. I'm trying to find the logic for the hair and uh, combing it back. Also I'm showing the uh, other guides, uh, the larger guides, which I eventually ended up uh, exporting as curves and then bringing back into Maya to uh, combine them into the same guide modifier. So they're all under the same editable guides modifier. Also I went back to ZBrush at some point to export additional guides. Here I'm using the freeze feature to have more control on the uh, guides on some and not others. Now I've added a noise uh, modifier to the guides modifier. So I'm able to twist them around. I also turn it off and on periodically and also test the clumping to see how it all works together. I play around with the correlation and the preserve length. The preserve length will keep the hair as long as it is and it's not going to stretch it out with the clumping. And the correlation will fit the clumps to the guides more so it's not going to deviate too far off from the guides direction. Now you see I'm playing with the noise that I've added to the guides so I'm adding more curls and, and curves to the, uh, to the main guides. Changing the density on the clumping as well. And this is a very uh, time consuming and repetitive uh, trial and error part of the, the groom. A lot of these are quite usable results but I was trying to find a balance between uh, wavy and curly hair. Also I'm uh, adding noise modifier there for uh, the groom itself and not for the, for the guides. Uh, to add more flyaways, those are the unkempt hairs that are uh, the breakaway from the silhouette of the model. I've also added a noise texture there and I connected it to the noise modifier so I'm able to have only some of the hairs uh, be affected by the noise which creates the outer silhouette of a, kind of an unkempt hairstyle. Playing around with additional clumping, varying the magnitude and seeing what works. Playing with the noise modifier on the guides itself. It's the difference between the bigger noise on the guides and the smaller noise that's happening on the description level. So the bigger noise will have a bigger effect on the guides driving the whole system, while the smaller noise, which is this one playing around with, will have more fine-tuned noise. So I'm constantly switching back and forth between them to try to find if I'm adding the noise uh, on a tiny level, on a strand level, or on a guide level. It's the big versus small effect. Also tweaking the noise texture associated with the noise uh, 
modifier that I've had on the description that's affecting the, the hair itself and not the guides. Because the noise texture basically uh, controls the flyaways, how many of the hairs are affected. Because I don't want to apply the, the on hair level noise to the whole thing, only to some of the hairs. Now I'm placing additional guides and also uh, grooming with the frozen effect uh, to control only some of the guides. In, in this case, it was just uh, one guide. Moving it out of the way so it doesn't clip, making sure it doesn't clip the earring and the hat. Adding additional volume to the hair with the move. Noticing it was getting deflated and it was supposed to be a more fuller hairstyle. Here I'm adding some waviness manually to key areas so it looks like a, a wavy hairstyle. Choosing uh, what guides go in front and what guides go behind the hat. Continuing to add volume to the hair, also uh, moving it away from the face in some spots. And I'm also moving it closer. I end up, after seeing this in the render, uh, moving it closer in that area. Because once you add the lighting in there, uh, you can tell what needs more refinement. In that case, it was casting a lot of shadow on her face, so I had to actually move it closer to, to the skin. And that's for the uh, screen right side of the face. Adding more volume there, plugging in areas that are uh, a gap. Now usually, uh, you would have a part in the middle of the hair. And it will should not be bald like that, but since the uh, the head ornament is kind of covering that up, I uh, kind of left it as is, didn't tweak it too much. Now I'm adding tapering to the eyebrows. Uh, it was kind of a, a thicker end to the hairs, and I uh, needed to thin them. Same thing with the eyelashes; they were too thick at the end, so I added a taper to them. Right there, I played around with the width. Eventually, I double the amount of uh, hair we see here, but I try to keep it fast in the viewport initially by having uh, not too many. Adding more waviness. This part that clips the headdress, the uh, jewelry she's wearing. Trying to make it not clip. Getting it out of the way. Same thing with the earrings, I kind of lost track of that, so I had to push it back again. So the earrings are currently just jammed in there, and I will have to go in with a finer comb to basically move the hair out of the way so it doesn't look like it's going through the earrings. And that comes later. Right now I'm just making it the broader changes with the uh, the brush to the guides and then I will add a another sculpt layer that affects the actual description, the actual hair, which will control uh, the fine tuning adjustments. Right now just focusing on the bigger bigger shapes. You can see right there, I created a gap that I'm going to have to fill later, once I see it in the render. Freezing and isolating one of the guides, so I can uh, bridge the gap between two bigger guides. Because the interpolation uh, wasn't covering that area, so I had to basically fit it with another guide there. Kind of lose volume if you don't do that, that's what I'm doing here as well moving guides in, in a spot that's kind of in between two bigger guides. So I'm just bridging it. So we don't have too many uh, bigger gaps. A lot of this gets covered up by the noise anyway, but I'm just doing it. And right there, I bumped up the amount of hairs which gives a nicer uh, clumping effect and noise effect as well. 
And now I go in for the uh, finer adjustments. I added a sculpt layer to the description. So right now it's not affecting the guys. It's only affecting the final group. This step is usually uh, done uh, when you're totally happy with the groom and you don't want to make any more broad changes. See right there, I also use the freezing effect uh, to control some of the hairs. Moving stuff out of the way to make it look like it's not clipping. It can clip in the back, but in the front, uh, the area we see it the most, it should not be clipping. It's just the illusion that it's uh, not clipping the hair, even though in the back it is. Same thing happening up there with the jewelry. Do that as much as possible there. More fine tune adjustments. More noises things together clumping as well now I'm noticing that the eyebrows were too thick and some of those uh, strands were too uh, long so I had to go in there with a length brush and shorten those now I assign a V-Ray next hair shader to everything all the hair descriptions in the scene and I start testing what the hair looks like I'm happy with the result initially but it needs some adjustments to the groom uh, and also at the gloss level, which I do here. I uh, play around with the gloss to try to see what works. I eventually end up separating the eyebrows and eyelashes to have their own shader, while the main hair has its own shader. Playing with the glossiness there. Also checking the lighting mode in V-Ray frame buffer. Now at this stage, I'm noticing that the uh, background gradient wasn't as interesting as it could have been. So I'm changing it by adding a ground disk geometry uh, that's made out of uh, all quads, which is a uh, primitive object available in 2019. This is gonna be really good for displacement later when I add a texture to the ground. I'm adding a ramp texture to the opacity map part of the shader, which lets me control uh, the faded effect happening around the edges of the disk. I really like this effect, it makes it look like a uh, sort of uh, spotlight which looks more interesting than the gradient I had before. Earlier it looked too clean and the world was kind of uh, completely flat. So right now I'm adding this uh, faded ground plane that later I'm going to add a texture to to make it look like she's standing in a, an environment or at least a piece of an environment. Since this is just a character model presentation, uh, I'm just going to grab a texture from Substance Source. I'm going to use it on the ground disc to give some context to the scene. Now I'm looking at the hair from other angles. It's always good to test the glossiness that way. V-Ray Next works really fast with the uh, V-Ray frame buffer. It lets you even scrub the timeline and play and it will uh, continue to update the view. It's really fast being able to move around and uh, the render continues to update. And I'm checking the gray shaded lighting view. This gives me uh, a good impression of what the hair looks like. And also changing the angle, because I think we were looking too low at her at the start. Also checking the light linking, making sure that everything I've linked to the other gradient background was linked to the disc as well. Now I'm extending the timeline to be 240 frames instead of 120 because I like the longer 10 second uh, turntable instead. Also the Rebus farm, I can render it super easily and it will render out really fast. After testing out some of the textures on Substance Source and Substance on the ground plane disc, I exported one I really liked and uh, after I changed the tiling on it, now I'm plugging it into the V-Ray shader. Making sure all the grayscale maps are set to raw. Also plugging in the displacement, the displacement shader, and adding the V-Ray attributes to the actual mesh itself. But that's what it looked like at the start. It's kind of a rocky, uh, styled surface. I played around with the values and saturation some more. Also play around with the spec amount to see how much my lights cause specular. 
also the normal map was causing some issues. Then I did some adjustment on the displacement map and displacement shift. Since this is a one-sided surface, the displacement shift will have to be a negative to push back the displacement. Uh, so you would push out the details, but the plane itself won't clip the model. So always tweaking those values. Otherwise, it either clips the model or it looks like it's uh, floating. Now I'm doing some debugging on the gloss map. I went back to Substance Painter and I adjusted some of the gloss values on the nails and the face as well. Doing some additional remapping of the values in my. Always making sure to check the other views as well. So I was noticing on the render that the lower eyelashes were a little bit too short. I wanted it to look like she's wearing uh, sort of mascara makeup. I end up going back and playing with the length and the density of those as well later. But for now, uh, the crucial thing was to make them longer. Also during the render in the gray shaded lighting view, I noticed that the hair wasn't as thick as it needs to be. So I increased the hair amount and now I'm uh, making sure none of the hairs are straying away too far from the groom. This usually happens when you increase the density of the hair. The teeth were a little bit too glossy in all views, so I had to go and uh, change the reflection strength so it's uh, less specular. Drop down the amount significantly. Checking other views. Make sure the hair gloss is working. Gray shaded view is working as well. Now I'm happy with the density and the amount of hair in the gray shaded view. And then I move on to the ground plane. I tweak the specular and a reflection color to add a little bit of blue to it. Now I'll check a higher res render, the first full resolution render I've done in a while. Starting seeing some errors that I didn't see before because of the noise. Some stuff you can only see in the full view render. Like the corner of the eyebrows, uh, they weren't looking too natural, so I had to change the uh, density map. I paint in additional areas. Also, I realized that I do need additional guides there as well. Because some of the hairs were sticking out, they weren't following a specific flow. So I go to the place brush and I add three guides there. And then I paint freezing for them so I'm able to isolate them and then I'm able to groom them separately also paint out the region and then do freezing on the actual hair on a separate sculpt layer that controls the description itself and not the guides that way I'm able to fine tune the exact flow now I'm doing some additional lengthening and shortening in some areas here didn't want the eyebrows to be completely dense. Moral length adjustment to the eyelashes. And changing the way they curve as well, because I was noticing in the render there were uh, some empty spots there. I think they were clipping the skin. So I adjust the guides accordingly. Also in the render, I've noticed this area right there in the hair uh, was curving in a little bit uh, artificial way. So I curve it the other way to fix it. Also this area, I saw that there was a shadow there, as I mentioned earlier. I returned to this section to uh, bring it closer to the face. It was casting too much shadow before, and there was a gap. Now we inspect the render. That's another render. Happy with how a lot of things are working out, except for the density of the eyelashes. There were just too many hairs on the lower eyelashes. They were coming out too thick. Even with makeup on, they wouldn't be this thick. So I go in with a density brush and I uh, decrease them out randomly, as well as tweaking the length a little bit. Also, a quick note about the Maya interface. You've noticed I've had my windows here set up in four quadrants, channel box, XGen Interactive, tool settings, and the attribute editor. So I'm able to adjust them without having to scroll through different windows. 
Now I do a final check and I'm happy with how everything looks. Now it's render time. I go to rebusfarm.com, which I will be using uh, to render out my full turntable at a very high resolution. I go to the render cost calculator and I put in the render time, the amount of frames, and my computer processor model. I get a cost estimate and now I return back to Maya and with the Rebus Farm plugin that I've installed into Maya, I'm able to fire off the render after it does a quick scene check. And now it uploads the entire Maya scene and all the textures associated with it and you see it in the browser here. And after it's done, which takes less than an hour on Rebus Farm, it automatically downloads all the frames through the plugin to my computer and I'm able to view them here in RV player. And you see there's some flickering artifacts here, which is what we call moiré, that happens on detailed areas when you're zoomed out. This of course goes away in the comp and when you zoom in. Checking all the details, making sure there's no issues, no glitches. And I'm generally happy with how it turned out. Now I do a quick comp in After Effects, usually I would do it in new cut work, but here I have just a, a quick dirty After Effects comp. It's just going to be duplicating the layer a few times and applying different blurs to it, adding a quick bloom and also changing the background color a little bit so it's not 100% dark. Some tricks to at least trying to make it look a little bit photographic. You see the subtle background change there, the color slightly lighter. Also there's the bloom and the blur. Just gives it a nice softness and helps it blend together. That's it. And here's the final turntable. I hope you found these videos helpful and thank you very much for watching.